All right, I think we're ready to get started. I want to start off by thanking everyone for joining us today. This is uh, it's going to be a, a good chance for us to start to close out the year and uh, and think about uh, what we have coming up in the next year. Um, we're going to kick off our uh, our presentation in just a few moments here. As we go through, we're going to be talking about Giving Tuesday, the big marathon fundraising event uh, that a lot of our organizations have gone through. We'll be thinking about the role of Giving Tuesday in an overall engagement architecture. And as we uh, continue through that, we'll talk about the, the campaign context for Giving Tuesday, uh, what it takes to, to run a Giving Tuesday campaign. And we'll uh, proceed into lessons learned uh, from, from this year and, uh, and years past and talk about practical steps in, in terms of uh, improving the outcomes of future fundraising efforts. In particular, thinking about the platform uh, implications of that. So as we begin, I'll introduce myself first. I'm Stefan Bird Kruger. I'm the head of the data strategy practice at Parsons TKO. We look at, uh, at, at organizations and we look at their audience engagement capabilities. And, and a big part of that is understanding how we can use data uh, around those capabilities. And, uh, and that's a, a big part of what we do in our consulting work. In our consulting work, we help these organizations understand what those audience relationships look like uh, and at scale and, and often through a data lens. Joining me today, we have two of our consultants, uh, Kimberly Rollins, uh, who comes to us with a wealth of background, having spent years as a major gift officer uh, in the nonprofit sector, and, and as well as uh, John Harrison, who leads some of our, our largest consulting projects, uh, including and especially with development uh, uh, clients on development projects. So as we get their perspectives. We're going to you know, talk a little bit about uh, the, the major context for fundraising efforts, and in particular, the, the Super Bowl of fundraising that is Giving Tuesday. Um, I'll talk first a little bit about what that looks like and, and where it fits in an organization's broader context. And then we'll, uh, we'll hand it off uh, to, uh, to my co-panelists, and, uh, and we'll end with a little discussion around that. So I think when we talk about having Giving Tuesday retrospectives, um, you know, the retrospective itself might just be a moment. It's, uh, you know, we're going to talk about the process of bringing your team together and thinking about how that team uh, surfaces insights and, uh, and sets goals for the future of their work. Um, but a big part of this and why we are making such a big point of having this kind of look back is to extract long-term value from your campaign. And, and that's a, is, is a major goal for us. We, we focus on improving organizational capabilities. Um, and we do that through our company lens that we call engagement architecture. And so as we look at organizations, we think about the, the overarching and, and holistic and comprehensive set of capabilities that they have to drive audience engagement. And that's the sum total of the, the technology, the platforms, uh, but also the people in that organization and the processes and, and, and how they work together, those, those workflows that help them achieve their strategy, create positive experiences for audience members that drive the key engagement touch points, which can be donations, uh, but also extends to a lot more than that. It's about the long-term relationships that we're forming with our donors, uh, the opportunities to volunteer, the content that they consume. Um, and through all of that, there is this thread of data that flows. And so that's a big part of, uh, of our perspective is that that data can be used as an input into the rest of the, the architecture uh, and, and used to improve those experiences and improve the long-term engagement. So, you know, when we talk about Giving Tuesday, Giving Tuesday is really but a moment in, uh, in, a, in, in the long-term uh, and year-round cycle of, of audience engagement. Um, but that moment is one that we have to seize, and we seize that moment with the capabilities that we have developed. And, and that process of developing those capabilities is, is not instantaneous. We don't start working on Giving Tuesday uh, the morning of. Um, it, is a, it is a long process, and people work through uh, many phases, uh, both uh, the, in the weeks before, um, but really the, the years before each, each Giving Tuesday. And the context of that is really important as to whether or not Giving Tuesday is successful and whether we are able to extract that long-term value out of Giving Tuesday. 
and this is the you know the sort of the, the context of uh, of thinking about that understanding that how the day goes depends on how well prepared you are um, a lot of organizations will spend weeks if not months ahead of giving tuesday making sure that they know what their approach is going to be they have the resources in place um, sometimes uh, organizations will even staff up for all of the back and forth and, and the conversations that they're going to spark um, the, around giving tuesday and, and a lot of those capabilities, what you, uh, what ambitions you have for your Giving Tuesday campaign are gonna be constrained and empowered by the underlying donor engagement capabilities that you have as an organization. And those capabilities are years in the making. And, and that's gonna be a big focus of ours today is figuring out how we can use each Giving Tuesday to improve those underlying capabilities. Uh, but again, Giving Tuesday is that moment, but the relationships that we spark there should not end uh, you know, by the Wednesday after. Uh, so every Giving Tuesday campaign is an opportunity to start long-term relationships. And the tone of those relationships are set in the weeks after. How do you follow up? Uh, is there a phone call that goes out to new donors, uh, for example? And, and how is all that managed? How do you keep track of that? And the importance of this is the, the years of potential uh, for a long-term supporter uh, experience. And if you can get it right the first time around with the flood of new donors you might get on Giving Tuesday, you're setting yourself up for recurring revenue, but also long-term supporters, new volunteers, new constituents perhaps. And, uh, and depending on the work that you're doing, this is a, a real chance to expand the reach and engagement of your entire organization. Now, when we think about Giving Tuesday, it's important to consider the, the, the context for running a campaign and the different steps that you have in running a campaign to improve the quality of that campaign, and then more broadly to improve the quality of long-term campaigns. So a lot of times when we think about campaigns, we are looking at the first three steps of this campaign planning process. How do we actually do the planning? How do we come up with the strategy, consider the experiences, think about the, the goals of the campaign? And then that second step in targeting is really understanding how we use our tools to achieve, to actually succeed in that plan. How do we create the segments that we're going to be sending appeals to? How do we decide what channels we're gonna be on and how to reach our target audiences on those channels? And, and really thinking about those, uh, those precise mechanics of getting our message to the audience and capturing the audience that is right for our organization. And then the, the third thing that we can do to improve the outcome of any individual campaign is that optimizing uh, step, which is as it's happening, do we have the flexibility, do we have the governance in place to actually change what we're doing if we find that one of the parts of our strategy aren't delivering and we can reallocate efforts in real time to improve the outcomes of that. It takes a, a degree of, of sophistication and, uh, and I think more important um, discipline uh, of a team to be able to recognize that, understand what is and isn't working in real time and make those choices. Those are all things that you can do for any one campaign. But I think for this topic of retrospectives, it's almost more important to think about what happens after the campaign has concluded. And so that's where we're talking about these steps four, five, and six. The evaluating step where we actually sit down and think about what we've done, think about what we've accomplished, um, and gather the lessons learned from our team. Uh, the step of demonstrating is also very important. Can we tell the story of what we learned and communicate up to leadership um, and even out to peers and, and partners, uh, demonstrate how successful we were in, in achieving the, the plan of a campaign? And then last but certainly not least, recording. How do we help the organization actually keep track of the relationships that we formed so that they can be followed up with and engaged holistically in the future? And those four steps are, are the, the major domain of the, the retrospective uh, and what we're gonna dig a little bit deeper in today. And you know, as we talk about those uh, those those major steps, I think just a, a couple other examples and 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 quick you know tips on, and things to focus on when you're talking about evaluating a campaign. This is what it should look like. It's how do you bring your team together and actually make the time 
and uh, and preserve the time to to have that conversation and extract those lessons learned. Um, you know, I always encourage people put the retrospective uh, on on the calendar for your campaign even before it begins. It's very easy to skip this step um, because the campaign is done, so you can't change the outcome of it. But this step of having the retrospective is, is how you get the value, the long term value out of the campaign, is by making sure that you look back and and guard that value and find ways to preserve it. And so things you can do here are just really help to de democratize hypotheses, if not also the analysis. Your team who execute the campaign have the best seat in the house uh, for understanding what happened, what worked, what didn't work. And so getting their questions, getting their, their, uh, their responses is really important. And it's also a chance to look for the, the small data rather than the big data surprises. Um, are there really detailed and nuanced, uh, you know, perhaps a, one particular Twitter thread that went wild and brought new attention? These are things that you're not going to notice in the long term um, and, uh, you know, in an abstract, you know, overall uh, campaign impact report. But your team will see it while they're actually in there looking back at everything they just did. This is a great chance to notice those. And those are a lot of the best lessons are hidden in those uh, in those moments. And, uh, and just jumping to that last step of recording, uh, figuring out what you remember about your audience will, will help your organization um, ensure that your audience remembers you. And so being clear about what you want to do with your data, how are you going to use it again in the future? How might you use it again in the future if it's properly preserved? And, uh, and this is a chance to, uh, to, to really empower your organizational memory. Um, you know, anyone who's uh, in development work and, you know, particularly in major gifts, we depend on our brains, on our relationships, everything that we, we curate as, uh, as individuals. But when you're talking about Giving Tuesday and you're talking about individual giving and the scale that you have there, your ability to record that data is really your, your organization's institutional memory. It's how you remember relationships at scale. And so thinking about how you manage the data around Giving Tuesday is very important. And, and being sure that you migrate that data into a system of record and a system of action. Where are you actually going to use it again to do the segmentation, to have follow-ups? Um, but, uh, but it's not just about the data. It's again, it's about the lessons learned. Uh, so from that retrospective, uh, the conversation you'll have with your team perspective, where are you going to put the lessons learned so that they can be accessed again in the future? What is your institutional memory? Um, whether that's a, a wiki or uh, you know, minutes for a future ad agenda, um, an agenda for a future meeting. Um, these are all opportunities for you to make sure that the lessons learned get surfaced again in the future. And with that, I will hand it over to my colleague, Kimberly, uh, to talk a, a little bit more uh, specifically and personally um, about experiences with Giving Tuesday and the kinds of lessons we can extract from it. Thank you so much, Stefan. So as already mentioned, um, Giving Tuesday probably about a decade ago was, was novelty to us. We'd heard of Black Friday, we'd heard of maybe Small Business Saturday and even Cyber Monday, but this idea really came about to allow a universal focus on philanthropic organizations and quite frankly, the global impact that organizations were having across the world. So for those of us that were already knee deep in the trenches um, in development, some of us were met with a little bit of confusion on, okay, we've got our plans for the year, we know what we're doing, and here comes this global day where we've really got to stop and focus our attention in a way that sets um, really a path forward for the organization itself and not just thinking about this collective buy-in, but really what does the voice look like for your collective, for your um, Giving Tuesday campaign? So it's notable that we should mention that, you know, nearly 40% of all giving um, really comes into most nonprofit organizations in November and December, which I think is oftentimes why we like to say that Giving Tuesday campaigns are sort of the kickoff to the giving season and the Super Bowl, if you will, of philanthropic support. Um, but one of the things that we wanna talk about is that retrospective component. Um, it's important to also think about what the activity is on that day and the significance. So for those that are really philanthropically minded, you may have donors that are giving to multiple organizations on that single day covering various interests. 
You may also have audiences that are new to you and have never been to your website, that have never seen your story. And given the, the strength that is um, hashtags as well as other campaigns, um, really gives you an opportunity to expand your voice as well as your audience in a way that you might not have been able to do if you were a more local or a regionalized organization. And so it's really important as you think about your retrospective to think about what are ways that donor patterns could have changed, both given things like COVID in 2020. We saw many new donors that showed up on Giving Tuesday's doorstep with an opportunity for organizations to share their stories and also grab in new audiences. But also Giving Tuesday can be a really unique opportunity to be thoughtful about what are the ways that your current donor base has been supportive of your organization. Is this the time that really you want to bring in volunteers and thinking about peer leadership? Um, we can draw on a couple of examples of really strong um, matching donor programs that really provided a deeper impact for that single day, but really took months and months of planning to get that one donor who may, for example, have said, I'll do a dollar for dollar match up to 50,000. And all of a sudden, you're now entering a new territory where you're able to not only double impact for donors that might be giving much lower dollars, but also really raising the awareness as well as the significance of their gift impact by utilizing and playing on the strengths of board members or perhaps much larger donors to your organization in the past that really can feel that their philanthropic support covers a much greater swath. So it's important to think about that. Um, it's also important to think about what are the tactics. So sometimes you can come into Giving Tuesday, particularly if you're newer in an organization and newer to development, and maybe say, well, what did happen? Were we making comparison notes from last year? Who came in during that day? Um, I think it's a really good call out to also think about what were the splashier messages that got um, maybe higher gift amounts. And I think Again, the uniqueness of the short-term campaign is that you can really call out and pull data specific to areas in which there was tremendous support or maybe a decrease, for example, in giving. So really being able to track almost in a timeline manner is really important as you're thinking through um, the impact as well as the messaging that you're telling. And lastly, you know, really thinking about what are, your, what are gonna be your top priorities on how you improve? So I always say, if it's not broken, don't, you know, don't try to fix it. Um, but as a part of this um, evaluating and demonstrating and certainly the recording experience, it's really imperative that as you're looking at your Giving Tuesday activity, that you do think about what is the message and who's, who is it resonating with, as well as think about your internal structure for Giving Tuesday and don't limit it just to your um your traditional fundraising team, but really thinking about if you have a programs team, if there are other areas within the organization, even from the leadership perspective, what types of voices do you want to emerge as you talk about the impact of the work that you're doing? Because truly you do have a platform in a very spotlighted way during your Giving, um, Giving Tuesday campaign activity. The next slide. Um, this is one of my favorite sayings, plan your work and work your plan. Um, I think it's critically important as we think about, again, a couple of key areas, not only just for Giving Tuesday, but as you're thinking about short-term campaigns, your target audience, it may change from time to time. It should stay core and central to your overall mission and thinking about where your messages truly can resonate. Um, but really use Giving Tuesday as an opportunity to think about different types of segmentation. One great example of that um, at an organization that I worked for was we really leveraged a group of young professional volunteers and really em empowered them to, with a toolkit as well as smaller training sessions prior to Giving Tuesday to really empower them to go out and share the message of the organization. And so it might just be that your segmentation might be younger donors. It could be that your segmentation is thinking about those that might have lapsed, um, which we call cybunts that have given some years to your organizations, but not in other ways. Um, really thinking about important segments can also be a great way to um, guide and direct some of the work that you're doing 
as you look back in your retrospective of if you haven't segmented, what are some of the key core audiences that it might resonate with? And the other thing I'll mention is current events. Are there things that are happening in your mission that are relevant? So whether you are working at workforce development and there are some things happening on the ground or the impacts of COVID have impacted the workforce, thinking about those segmented audiences of interest is also something that you can play into that. Um, your outreach strategy. So outreach is critically important, we know. You have to also keep in mind that your audience is being bombarded with messages, right? Like this is not just another day where they're only getting a message from organization X. They're going to get messages from about 20 to 50 organizations if they're really involved in um, 501c3s and other nonprofit activity. It's a lot to, to get hit with. And so really thinking about your outreach strategy is important. Um, and then the, the other area that I want to mention is the storytelling with impact. Donors we know, in particular, thinking about older millennials, Gen Zers, and really everyone for that matter. I think it's been a call out more recently about um, these are the audiences that truly, truly care about impact. And so you want to get the story right on Giving Tuesday, because if you're not demonstrating that impact, you can certainly lose a donor or it might not be a donor that you keep. And we wanna be, be sure that we can have long-term strategies for keeping those donors that might show up on Giving Tuesday um, and really sharing that impact and storytelling. Also think about your voice, the voice that you want the messages to come from. Sometimes in organizations, your leader is the only voice in your direct mail and sharing updates, Think about whether it's your board chair or maybe somebody that's been greatly impacted um, as a result of your nonprofit and think about how that voice might change or shift as well as add to and enhance the impact of the overall messaging. Um, and lastly, creativity, right? Like we are oftentimes very reactionary in our organizations. We have a lot on our plates all year long. November comes along and maybe we forget the creative angles that we wanna take in the retrospective will provide you with an opportunity to set some time to think about what are the creative ways that you wanna do things differently? What are new things that you wanna try? And lastly, I say, look to your left and to your right at your neighbors that are also doing the similar work because we know that as a campaign time, this is the one time where every nonprofit in your area and across the country is sharing best practices. There are toolkits that are available. So really leverage that time and opportunity as you're doing those retrospectives to, to truly get creative and think about ways to maybe elevate your message while also thinking about long-term strategies for things that you might wanna change going forward. And now I will turn it over to John. We will talk about what you can gain from the retrospectives. Thanks, Kimberly. So I'm going to um, go into some tactical um, elements about um, Giving Tuesday retrospectives, but I want to sort of sell this idea on, on it first, like why retrospectives are important. And I came from, the non, from a nonprofit background, and we didn't do retrospectives for a really long time. But once we started doing them, it was an opportunity, not just with Giving Tuesday, but with all campaigns to really kind of democratize the team cohesion that's happening. Um, to, to really hear from the, the folks that put in the effort, that built the content, that pushed out the landing pages, that amplified things on social, that did all the work to really make your Giving Tuesday bring in the revenue that it did for your organization, to really hear from them on what they thought worked, what didn't work, and things like that. It's really helpful to have the team um, hear about the effective tactics that they use so that they can be elevated. Um, it's also great to hear about those key stories about the good work that your nonprofit is doing, your mission um, driven work, to hear about the impact that it made um, on, on those particular um, Giving Tuesday audiences. And then also identifying those top priorities for improving those capabilities. So it's really thinking about like, this is what we did this year. What can we think about this from the perspective of like, shrink wrapping those things and putting them on the shelf so that when we come back six months, eight months, nine months, 10 months, 11 months, 
to the next Giving Tuesday, we can look back at what we did. We have a good document in place. You know, it's institutional knowledge, like Stefan was talking about. Um, really thinking about what are those things that we can take off the shelf and revisit for the next Giving Tuesday. So that's really what we gain from retrospectives. I'm going to delve a little bit into um, some of the tactical things in a minute here. So this is really to know where you've been, to know where you're going. You really want to assess like what went well, you know, to keep keep these keep doing these things. What could be improved? So what could be done better? What went poorly? You know, don't do these things again. And what did your aspirational peers do? So I think it's really important to to give your team, especially the folks that contributed to Giving Tuesday activities, to really think about these kinds of things. Treat your campaigns as an opportunity to develop long-term strategies and enhance and build upon that culture of philanthropy at your organization. So on my next slide, I have a simple retrospective agenda. And this really, you could really dive in deep um, into a retrospective, depending on the time that you have with your team, depending on how many folks might have contributed to the campaign from a, you know, from a content perspective, from an outreach perspective, from an application perspective. But I think at the top level, the, the three most important agenda items would be number one, what went well. So think about what the things that you did that you should continue doing. Number two, what could be improved? And so those are the things like, what are the things we should do differently? And that might be really obvious, you know, that you might hear from the team right off the bat around the things that are improved, that you wanna improve. And number three, what things should we stop doing? And you can go a level deeper, so you can sort of build upon the fidelity depending on the on the time that you have with your team. So think about like, where should we invest our money or time next year if we stop doing things versus doing what we're doing this year? Um, as far as like what went well, like were there pleasant surprises? Did something do really well because of market conditions, because of current events like Kimberly was talking about earlier? Like what are the what were the pleasant surprises that uh, something did a lot better than you thought this year? As far as like on the improvement um, angle, like do we have the best information and data to make future decisions? I mean that's a huge one. Like if you don't have a way of tracking some of the um, some of the touch points perhaps, or some of the platforms or some of the uh, channels that you're promoting or giving Tuesday work through, like maybe that's something to think out for the, for the future so that you have better data insights into, into that work. And lastly, you know, about the things you should stop doing perhaps, do you anticipate challenges that for next year that you can proactively address, you know, so you can kind of refine this agenda if depending on how much time you have. On my next slide, I have a, a huge list of questions that you can go um, deeper if you have the time with your team to really focus on this during your retrospective. And these are very tactical. So start with your high level questions, you know, start with those high level questions and you can increase the fidelity and detail of your inquiry as you listen and learn from your team. You can make adjustments based on how things went. But I would start up here at the top, you know, ask your team, like what was done differently this year from last year's? How did each outreach channel do? So if you're using social to amplify things, obviously your website, email marketing, maybe you're using a new social channel this year, you know, TikTok, Instagram, maybe that's something you haven't done in the past. Maybe LinkedIn for business is a new one. Maybe you've uh, done something different with direct mail this year. How did things do this year? Okay, so you can start really high level. Um, you can ask questions about a particular thing that you might have done differently. Like in this example, I've got, did we increase budget or effort in a new area? Like for instance, advertising perhaps. And depending on the amount of time that you have, you know, what can you, where can you dive in and go a level deeper? Like, do we have any results that can validate some of these assumptions that we had going into the Our Giving Tuesday campaign? Like, for instance, did we intentionally attempt to optimize or improve one of our approaches compared to last year? Did we amplify a specific channel? How did each touch point fare this year compared to last year? And as you start to talk through this, you know, this is this starts to point to why having a, a good platform in place with data allows you to make some of those comparisons year over year. If you're looking at something like an advertising budget, like you might go a level deeper, like how did our ads perform in general? 
what ad placements were the most successful and why? Was it the content? Was it um, the, the budget for those ads? Did the matching gift ads perform better than the non-matching gift ads? So you can really increase the fidelity of your retrospective questions you know, with your team. You can choose to dive into particular areas that might give you some insights for the coming year. And as you move move through this, you know, make sure that we're documenting this. Make sure that you're you're building that institutional foundation so that you can go back and look at look at your retro, um, you know, nine ten months from now, so that you can start planning for your Giving Tuesday, twenty twenty three. One thing to think about too that has come up this year that always should be considered when you're when you're thinking about um, talking about a retro is platform changes are inevitable. So this year you may have done something a certain way. You know, there's no surprise if you're paying attention right now um, to Twitter, for instance, like, you know, nonprofits have a lot of reliance on Twitter um, and have in the past, but that reliance is starting to decrease over the past few months. So we've got advertisers that are leaving the platform and other platforms are stepping up. You know, you've got LinkedIn for business, there's Mastodon that's appearing. So there's a looming question out there that we, you know, nonprofits and, and mission oriented uh, organizations should start thinking about for Giving Tuesday 2023 is like, will Twitter be around next year or will we use it in the same way we're using it this year? You know, if you've used Twitter this year for amplifying your Giving Tuesday appeals, it may be worth thinking about plan B. You know, what would you do with that time and effort next year? How are you going to pivot? When do you need to make a decision? You know, these things are happening fast, um, but they may take time to unravel. You know, you, you don't have to have the answers to all the questions in the retro, but they're definitely next steps to begin discussions and planning around. You know, another consideration too that's not mentioned here is your platforms contain your donor information. So if they're set up to cultivate and document your most valued, high value donors, how are they configured to track Giving Tuesday donations? You know, we've worked with a lot of nonprofits um, who have like a CRM system that is set up uh, in a way that the CRM is capturing their high value donors. But it turns out a lot of high value donors have contributed to Giving Tuesday, whether it's a $50 donation or a $2,500 donation. So these are valuable data points for philanthropy teams who are on point to manage and cultivate those relationships with high value donors to be aware of that, you know? So definitely think about how your data and your platforms can be more actionable and can be optimized in a holistic fashion around Giving Tuesday as well. All right, so I'll pass the next uh, conversation off to Stefan, who's gonna talk a little bit about our February webinar. Thank you very much, John. This is just a, a quick highlight. We do have a, another webinar coming up that extends some of the topics that we uh, you know, have just covered and talked about today. I think in particular, the idea of understanding the role of our platforms, um, how all our platforms get stitched together. Um, and we're, we're very uh, excited and, and proud to announce that we're gonna be partnering on this upcoming webinar in February with Civis Analytics. Uh, Civis manages a platform that is exceptionally tailored uh, to that goal of ingesting huge amounts of data from lots of different places in a complicated campaign and allowing you to study it, analyze it, and perhaps most importantly for, for operating at scale, giving you the power to manipulate and then reinsert it back into your systems in ways that can be used in the future. Um, and so I think in, in this uh, upcoming webinar, this is a, our February webinar, um, we're gonna get a chance to talk about what that looks like. And, and it's particularly important in, uh, in a year like this, I mean, every year is different than the last, um, but we are facing an era of pretty unprecedented change. Um, you know, we have uh, high record high inflation, inflation like we haven't had in decades. Uh, we have a, a looming, uh, you know, the threat of a, of a looming recession. Um, and being able to look at uh, macroeconomic context like that, cultural context and changes, and, and being able to decide how are you going to change your strategy uh, based on that. 
Um, it requires both a, a nimbleness and a creativity, a foresight, uh, but then also the, the platform ability to act on those insights and act on those decisions. Um, so this, uh, this follow on webinar where we're gonna get more into the, the operations and tactics uh, of this, the, the, the lessons that you'll learn from doing your retrospective. Um, how do you put them into practice? That's gonna be the topic of, uh, of this upcoming one. Not our next one, but the one after that in February. And I think we, yeah, if you look in the chat, you should see a link to register for this webinar uh, to make sure that you don't miss it. And I think with that, we, uh, we're probably ready to go into questions. Um, if, if anyone uh, who's, uh, who's followed along so far has, has anything that you'd like to hear us discuss, please go ahead and throw it in, into the chat um, and we can take a look at that. Um, I, I think I wanted to start off though by, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll take the opportunity while I have the mic um, to ask a question of the group. And I'm not sure if this is more for John um, or more for Kimberly. Um, but, you know, John, you made that comment about when do we need to know uh, you know, what's happening in the landscape to decide what we're going to do with our platforms. And I thought that was a, a really, really good point. Um, and it, to me, it spoke to the importance of governance, um, knowing when do we make decisions? You know, what is the process? Is there a particular meeting? Um, is there a particular, uh, you know, person whose job it is to make these decisions? Um, and how do you keep track of that? Where do you, where do you manage the authority uh, to change tactics? Um, and I'd love to hear either one of you, um, you know, talk a little bit about what that looks like, um, you know, both theoretically, but also just from your, your own past experiences. Yeah, that's, that's a great question, Stefan. I would say it's definitely important to hold yourselves accountable as, you know, leaders in nonprofits and mission-driven organizations, like with this Giving Tuesday example in particular, like, you know, if you're going to do a retrospective and you're going to, you know, hear about the things that that worked well, the things that didn't work well, and think about the, you know, potential landmines that are coming up for 2023, you know, it's definitely... A, a point of like at least team governance or self governance over the Giving Tuesday campaign planning process, I think would be to, you know, go ahead and set set a date on your calendar, you know, when you start doing those, uh, those initial planning efforts for Giving Tuesday for the for the coming year, get ahead of it, you know, you may want to think about um, getting inputs from the same team that provided the retro, um, you know, just some things to think about definitely want to um, get that date on the calendar as soon as possible so that you don't forget about it and make sure you bring that documentation, you know, that institutional knowledge that you've gathered from your retro to that meeting so that you can say, let's pick off where we left off last year. Cause as Kimberly was saying, giving Tuesday, it's, it's a one day event, but there's a lot of planning that goes into it. So um, you can make this retrospective become part of what informs that planning. No, I think those are all really strong points. I think the other thing to keep in mind too, again, for those are that that are those of us that are more insular to specific development roles and development leadership that have to show up at the larger table, <clears throat> thinking about how organizations are utilizing certain platforms and system tools. It's a great call out to have the data show the backdrop of where you know changes need to be made and why those changes need to be made. So I think it's really important as you're thinking about systems and um, framing or even thinking about staffing needs um, around certain times of year for development work, um, it also can really strengthen and support the narrative of what's needed um, to really impact deeper results on development. Um, another thing that's a little bit different from the question that was just asked that I would be remiss if I did not share is as much as an ask strategy is important, a think strategy is also important. So how are we thinking people? So thinking about the larger stewardship components to campaigns, and it's something that I did not call out, but there's really great strong data that suggests the ways in which donors come into the organization is one thing, but how they sort of stay on the organization can really be reflected on this after piece. And so again, I think it really adds another 
um, bullet point, if you will, as to why a retrospective can be so important, because we want to make sure that those that have engaged with us, that have taken the time to go to the website, to click the link, um, and certainly to give and donate to the cause, also feel that they're embodied and, and felt their presence throughout the organization, not just for that day, but really what's the thinking strategy and how are we utilizing those across organizations as well as um, other tools that can make that strategy very successful, but also very efficient um, and uniform across all the platforms. Excellent, excellent points, uh, Kimberly. Uh, John, I think our, our next question is, is probably a good one for you. We've talked a bit about uh, the kinds of platform changes, you know, how do we evolve our infrastructure based on the lessons learned? Um, I know you've worked on a lot of projects like this, particularly, you know, architecture, uh, you know, enhancements, building new capabilities for organizations. Can you give examples of platform changes that you've seen organizations make based on lessons learned from the past? Yeah, I think one that we're working on with several of our clients right now across PTKO is like the Google Analytics 4 migration, you know, thinking that if with Giving Tuesday, like if your website is a big driver of outreach and you've got data, you know, data around um, how people are using your website, how they're interacting with your forms, how they're reading your blog content and your thought work, like really thinking about, okay, well, Google Analytics that version is going away. There's a new version out there. And this is a topic that I know Stefan is, is very well um, in the know of. And we have a lot of thought, thought work on our website about it. But just thinking about how does that, what does that mean for Giving Tuesday 2023? Like, how are you going to compare the Apple data to the oranges data that's in Google, uh, Google Analytics version 4? You know, another thing that I've, I've seen organizations um, think about adding to their platforms is often organizations will have a disconnect between their sort of their digital grassroots or low dollar donation um, fundraising and their high dollar donations and fundraising. And sometimes that can be tied back to a CRM or multiple CRMs perhaps. So, you know, we've seen some organizations that have multiple CRMs that they're using for the low dollar donations or the grassroots donations. And there's a disconnect there between, um, you know, the, the digital side, the grassroots side, the low dollar side and the high dollar side. And often, you know, that points to that holistic need for an ideal contact model in an organization. So really thinking about how everyone within a philanthropy team or development team like should see the people that they engage with, whether they're low value donors, whether they're advocates, whether they're plan givers, whether they're major gifts, you know, um, donors. So really thinking about how the systems and platforms um, are capturing the, the data that is going to help you make better decisions in the future. I think there's also a component around like, you know, just, uh, more like data privacy, there's um, suppression, like how how um, how organizations are maintaining like opt-ins and opt-out opt-outs of email and direct mail and things like that. So really thinking through, is your platform set up in a way where if you receive a request through your website or through the phone, that it's going to end up um, in a place where the people that need it most can can see it and can act upon it and do something with that data. You know, something with advertising I've seen is, uh, you know, folks have pivoted from Twitter advertising, you know, to LinkedIn for business. They've, uh, they're using Google search ads more. So thinking about like, if you've never done this before, you know, do you have a platform in place where you can tie some of that, um, tie some of those conversions and some of that um, activity that you see with your you know, your engaged subscribers with your website visitors, with people that are searching for your your um, nonprofit brand and your and your mission, so that they're finding you and that they're coming to you and they're participating in the things that you're doing, the good work that your organization is doing. So I've I've seen a lot of um, platform changes around more tactical things like advertising, social media, and how that shows up as well on these backend platforms.
Very good. Kimberly, did you have uh, something you wanted to, to chime in there on? Otherwise, uh, my next question is, is probably best for you, Kimberly. Um, you know, we, we've talked a lot about the principles of retrospectives, um, the, you sort of the, the theoretical value, the role of a retrospective and, and the campaign life cycle and, and how to build capabilities off of it. Um, but of all of us, I think you have probably sat through the most uh, retrospectives for Giving Tuesdays in particular. Um, can you give us any specific examples, you know, tactical examples of lessons learned that you've seen teams take away from conducting a retro? Um, and then, you know, down, down the road, how that actually gets implemented, um, uh, you know, how you've seen those, those lessons learned put into practice? Yeah, sure. Um, so the first thing I'll say is you really need one person in your organization, perhaps outside of your your lead of development focused on Giving Tuesday. It can be, you know, a project that's doled out, even if you have a really small development team. But what I found is the greatest success when doing a retrospective was there wasn't a, a core central person that could really target and think about all the things that go into Giving Tuesday, both the lead up, the actual action of Giving Tuesday itself, and then cer certainly, um, the after. Um, and so thinking about that, I think that's one of the most important things to do. Um, it's also important to look at, again, who gave during that period. And I think sometimes, again, in the busy nature of development, particularly in November, we sometimes forget to pause and actually look at who gave, but you can really unmine some really um, great donors that might actually be much larger donors that might have given a small starter gift, if you will, to your organization and come to find out, you know, they're a good friend of a board member who actually has much larger capacity. So not looking at sort of the aggregate of who gave overall, but really breaking down the data right then and there to understand um, and gain a bigger picture of who actually supported the organization during that time. So that's been really important. Um, the peer-to-peer -peer piece was something that, again, at another organization um, was incredibly effective, but also really empowering as you think about what are the ways that you can bring um, your either volunteers or people that are huge fans of your organization into the work that you're doing by really leveraging their own social media platforms. And so thinking about, um, I think was mentioned earlier, how do you leverage them to support and utilize toolkits when I think one year we didn't have toolkits for the volunteers. And so I think while they did their own messaging, the next year we found exponential returns because we actually had set toolkits, we had timelines um, and conducted a mini training that really greatly empowered them, but also reduced the time, if you will, for them that they would have had to spend to try to find a really cool fact or a nice picture. And so those, those were some of the main highlights of, of some changes that were made. Um, and lastly, the most recent Giving Tuesday was really the change of the voice. It really does matter who is um, doing the outreach on the other side. So even if it is ghost written by your development team, talking to people and using videos, um, again, maybe it's a day in the life of somebody that's been greatly impacted by your organization and they get to have your social media handle for the day. And it's really in, incredible to see, again, where that impact might reside versus your executive director or vice president of development saying, here's the impact that you can make on Kimberly versus Kimberly saying, this is so great because of this organization, I've had you know, better education outcomes. These are the great work that I'm doing as a result of the support from this organization and really putting the persona behind, um, again, where the donor impact goes. Um, the last thing I'll say that was a big change for um, some organizations I worked for, for from year to year was on the giving landing page, making it simple to give, as well as having a section on that page that said, why do you give? And it allowed us as a team to then go back to those notes and say, okay, this person said that they gave because a family member was deeply impacted. When we give them a thank you call, because we did that, you know, prior to sort of the advent of all the things that we do only electronically, we used to pick up the phone and call and say, thanks so much, Stefan, for your gift. We understand that your cousin was, you know, deeply impacted by this organization. Are there other things that you're interested in? And really 
I think donors appreciate the fact that the extra step is taken to not only recognize their gift, which in many cases can be average around $100 or less on Giving Tuesday, but really understanding that maybe they want to support the organization in other ways throughout the year. And so just that's another great way to um, personalize, um, again, the data and the segmentation and pulling of information to really drill down to who is actually giving on those days and during that campaign. Brilliant examples. Love that. Thank you. Thank you, Kimberly. All right, well, with that, I think we can go to our final slide, um, which is just to say thank you to everyone. Thank you for tuning in um, and engaging in discussion and, uh, and you know, uh, getting uh, those questions in there as well. Um, I think I want to, uh, you know, say from all of us we, how much we appreciate the, the mission-driven sector, all the work that everyone has done uh, over this year, um, and we hope each of your organizations felt duly rewarded on Giving Tuesday. Um, you know, our way of giving back, uh, in addition to you know participating in, in the work that we do with our clients, is to provide content like this. Um, and so we really encourage everyone in the in the sector to uh, look us up, uh, come to our website, ParsonsTKO.com. Uh, and we offer a wide range of content, um, uh, you know, written and video, a podcast and, and events like these and, and occasionally in person um, in select markets. And, and we really are looking forward to building the community of practice um, and helping to, to contribute to organizational capabilities with this kind of content. So thank you all so much. And uh, we look forward to seeing you next time.